Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today I have probably my favorite video I've made in quite a long time, and it's about the specific pressure that you need to be using when pumping. We're going to break down the data and show you what's ineffective, what's most effective, and what's puts you at risk of literally breaking your PP. So guys, you do not want to miss this one. And quite honestly, part of this is very validating as far as the way I do my research and conduct my PE. But before we go any further, guys, because I feel so passionately about this video and this topic, I'm going to be giving away my enlargement course, okay, for free to enter into the contest to win my free course. All you have to do is subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment just saying, hey, I'm interested in the course. So guys, let's get into it. So guys, for the background, I'm going to pull up this paper out of the Journal of Urology, and it talks about basically negative pressure of pumping. And so I'm going to have Kelly put up a video here, but it actually shows you that the negative pressure actually causes basically a balloon to inflate when you introduce it into a vacuum. So, so that's kind of the premise behind how all this works. Guys, I have an entire pumping playlist, which you can break through everything step by step. Okay, as far as how like pumping is performed and how it's used. But I do want to pull up a couple key things. Number one is that you're actually drawing in arterial blood into the penis. So that leads to improvement in the health, the erection quality, nerve function, and eventually the size because you're chronically dilating these chambers. And specifically, they showed that by using an ultrasound to image the chambers of the penis while under a vacuum, you can see that the, the diameter of the chambers can increase twofold, guys. So it can get over twice as big, okay, like the Grinch's heart when you're actually using a pump. And so by chronically dilating those chambers, that's how you lead to increased growth. So guys, now we're going to get into the actual pressure, okay? You have to understand that the natural physiology, meaning your natural erection pressure is about 100 millimeters of mercury, which is about 3.9 in inches of mercury or HG, if you want to incorrectly say it, like we so commonly say. So guys, we have clear clinical evidence that the minimum value that you need to actually have any kind of benefit whatsoever from pumping is at least 150 millimeters of mercury, which is just shy of six inches of mercury. So already baseline, Minimum is six inches of mercury to see results. So some people, I've been pumping for six years and I don't have any results. And it's like, well, how, how much were you pumping? Well, I was only using five HG. It's like, well, yeah, that's why. That's why you don't have a benefit. So guys, even for erection quality benefits, it has to be at least six inches of mercury. Because once again, they tested 100 millimeters of mercury, which is basically the standard erection pressure. And it showed no benefit whatsoever when you're looking at the actual benefits of pumping. Now, according to this paper by the Journal of Urology, the range for pumping is somewhere between 100 to 250 millimeters of mercury. So that's a solid range, which is typically between 5 to 7-ish inches of mercury, okay? But that's a pretty wide range, so we're going to break down more of the data to see what kind of range was used. Unfortunately, oftentimes on a lot of different like websites and even a lot of these published papers, they don't specifically say what pressure that was used. Like here, for example, in these pumping guidelines, this is for vacuum erection devices, but it basically says that use enough pressure to get an erection. It's like, okay, I mean, in general, that would be about 100 millimeters of mercury. But the other problem is people don't have pumps with an actual accurate gauge. Guys, if you are pumping, you want to use a pump that has a gauge where you could actually see exactly how much pressure is being used. So when you're pumping, let's see if I can get a decent seal. There you go. So you can actually see how much pressure is being obtained in order to do this safely and accurately. That just happens to be a pump from Peak Male Physique. So if you need one, guys, peakmalephysique.com, okay? High quality, cheaper than what you're going to find most places. So now, guys, we're going to look at the P-Long study. We talked about the study once before. It's combining extenders, the PRP, or P-Shot, and then pumping for gains. In this study, they said they used, they actually said 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, but I reached out to Dr. Brandeis, and he finally said, we actually meant to say 5 to 10 inches of mercury, okay? But once again, guys, that's a wide-ass range. That's in a bad workout metaphor here. But it's like, oh, if you're trying to get muscle hypertrophy, you need to do somewhere between 10 to 25 reps. Like to me, that's the equivalent of the, the width of the range there. So that's anywhere between basically 125 to 250 millimeters of mercury, okay? Still, I mean, within a general range, but once again, guys, you need you have to have at least that six 
threshold to get results. All right, guys, now we're actually going to get started to get into some studies that actually compared different pressures. Okay, you guys know I love my rat studies, and unfortunately, that's the best data that we have. This st rat study here looking at anti lysol oxidase compared different pressures, okay, to see which one yielded the best results. They looked at 200, 300, 400, and 500 millimeters of mercury to determine what is going to lead to the best results and i will read you a quote here 200 millimeters of mercury and anti-locks lengthen the penis by 14.05 percent and guys if you haven't seen my video on this check it out a very interesting paper of the substance anti lysol oxidase combined with pumping and how it can dramatically improve penis size but then it says while 300 millimeters of mercury and anti-locks increased the length by 19.84 percent suggesting that a higher mechanical force resulted in longer lengthening. Our previous study revealed that 300 millimeters of mercury slightly increased the side effects than 200 millimeters of mercury. However, 400 or 500 millimeters of mercury showed significantly elevated side effects. Therefore, we determined that 300 millimeters of mercury was a more suitable force for penile lengthening. According to this study, 300 millimeters of mercury, which is basically... 11.8 inches of mercury is the ideal pumping force. Callie put that up there. So basically 12 inches of mercury is the sweet spot balancing maximum lengthening, maximum gains results with the injury threshold. But guys, here's where the real beautiful trial comes out. Once again, this is another rat model, but what they did is they actually looked at basically penile rehab. So they actually injured a rat's penis, basically a bilateral cavernous nerve crush injury. And then they looked at the different vacuum erection devices to determine which pressure led to basically the maximum recovery from this penile injury. So this is not looking at penile enlargement. It's looking at injury recovery, which I've talked about a thousand and seven times the benefits of pumping for injury recovery. If you guys need injury counseling or want me to coach you one-on-one, -on -one, I also do it through my Patreon, patreon.com slash docking. So they looked at six groups, a control group, 200, 300, 400, and 500 millimeters of mercury. So what they found in this study, which I'll read you the conclusion here, is that 200 millimeters of mercury seems to be the optimal choice when you're talking about penile rehabilitation. So if you get injured, you have heart flaccid, you're trying to overcome some sort of penile injury, you have prostate surgery, 200 millimeters of mercury is the sweet spot. And guys here, I'm not going to bore you with the science, but you can see some of the graphs that I'm going to have Callie put up here where you can see when you're looking at things like the intracavernosal pressure, the actual penile pressure in the chambers, you want that to be higher. The best results came when you pumped at 200 millimeters of mercury. Here's where the really important data is, and that's why you can't just rely on reading abstracts for those of you that actually read these papers. In particular, you had a higher rates of injury, especially with over 500 millimeters of mercury. So 500 millimeters of mercury is about 19.6 INHG inches of mercury. So in particular, for the 500 millimeters of mercury pressure, foreskin avulsion, meaning essentially like the foreskin ripping off, happened in almost every rat. If these subjects were human, the harm of such high pressures would likely destroy the confidence and health of patients. Does that sound like something that you want to do? So I know what you're thinking. Oh, yeah, of course. Ain't nobody's going to be dumb enough to pump all the way up to 19.6, almost 20 inches of mercury. But wait, there's more. Here's where it gets really interesting because they say that when you have elevated pressure, your rates of fibrosis, your markers for fibrosis increase. This was particular evident for TGF beta, an indicator related to fibrosis, which impairs erectile function as its expression in the highest negative pressure groups, negative 400 and negative 500 millimeters of mercury increased considerably. This is thought to be a result of long-term inflammation, which stems from the damage inflicted by excessive negative pressure. So 14 inches of mercury, guys, is 15.75 inches of mercury. Why does this matter? Well, a lot of people want to burn me with fire, especially on the Getting Bigger subreddit, because there's a device out there that is combining vibrations, which if you haven't seen my video on why vibrations can be harmful, and combining that with high pressure pumping above 17 inches of mercury. They're like, oh, but it doesn't happen all at once to derp hink. You're an alarmist. Okay, ma maybe I am, guys. But they're saying right here that above 400 millimeters of mercury or 15.75 inches INHG increases your rates of fibrosis and would put you at risk of long-term penile damage, erectile dysfunction, scarring, etc. 
The data is what the data is, guys. I've said this before too. If you're going to be doing PE, you are putting yourself at risk of damage between the pulling, the tugging, the clamping, the pumping. All of this stuff can cause damage to your potential penile tissue. Guys, if you want to support me, great. If you don't want to support me, just look at the ingredients in what I call my, my safety stack, okay? It includes Safeguard, which has proven supplements that prevent fibrosis, our shield, which has proven ingredients that help with nerve regeneration and nerve protection. And then, of course, our vigor, guys, which is going to protect your endothelial cells, the lining of your blood vessels in your penis, maximize your erection quality, and keep your tissue overall safe, okay? I would highly recommend that even if you don't get it from me, guys. If you are interested, the links are in the description below. And so guys, another reason why that high pressure max value matters is because if you are using a bathmate, Hydromax Extreme, that is pumping to 16.4 inches of mercury. We already established that above that 15.75 inches of mercury leads to higher rates of the markers for fibrosis. So you have that Hydromax Extreme, you're maxing out, you're putting yourself at risk of penile damage. And more importantly, if you use any of those bathmate devices, which the Hydro has 10.47 inches of mercury and the Hydro Max has 13.46 inches of mercury, guys, the, one of the problems is there there is no gauge, so you don't know what pressure you're pumping to. So you can kind of guesstimate. And guys, if you want to know how to like guesstimate with your bathmate, please see one of the many videos I've made about bathmate already, including how to know what pressure you're using. But bottom line is you don't know what pressure you're using, so you don't know if you're going to maximize your gains or not or put yourself at risk of injury. So guys, what are my important takeaways? So I don't know if this sounds cocky or not, but like in my opinion, there's nobody doing this, guys. There's no, there's nobody putting this PE data together and putting it to you guys like me, in my opinion. You know, maybe I'm crazy, guys. But here we have the data showing that, number one, if you are recovering from an injury, you want... 200 millimeters of mercury should be your sweet spot or about 7.8 inches of mercury okay below 150 millimeters of mercury it's basically not doing anything which is less than six inches of mercury you want to hit at least six inches of mercury when you are pumping i think the sweet spot for growth is between 200 and 300 millimeters of mercury which is between 7.8 and 11.8 inches of mercury and that's what i try to shoot for personally and i would never pump above 400 millimeters of mercury or about 15.75 inches of mercury ever that's me guys it's your pee, pee you do whatever you want to it you want to call hink an alarmist that's fine okay i'll see you on my patreon for injury coaching soon kind of joking there and personally, I think to be on the safe side, my absolute max would be about 13.8 inches of mercury, which is about 350 millimeters of mercury to give me about, you know, 50 millimeters of mercury of a buffer range before you know that you're causing those fibrotic factors to be created. So guys, let me know what you think. Am I way off on this? Was this helpful, guys? And of course, if you want to learn how to do this stuff safely, one-on-one -on -one with me taking you through step-by-step -step how to do this, my course is available online, guys, but I hope you enjoy this free information. I love making this video. I learned a lot. If you want to support me, support Cali, the links are in the description below. Remember, guys, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah.